Now, uh, Tuesday night, it is movie night. Jim Shembury is with us, and he has brought in a guest. I have indeed. Gentlemen, listeners, I would like to introduce you to the wonderfully talented director, Ruth Borgobello. <laughs> Am I pronouncing your name correctly, Perfecto. Ruth? <laughs> How do you pronounce it? Uh, Borgobello. I, I you say it better than me. <laughs> I would have gone with a soft G. I was going to say Borgobello. Uh, <laughs> but no, I'd be wrong. French. <laughs> oh, okay, yes. Yeah. Ruth, you are so welcome. Tell us some of your previous credits, please. My, this is my very first feature film, actually. Wow. So before this, I did short films. Okay. At PCA. And did they win some awards for you? They did, yeah. They travelled sort of far and wide to the Tribeca Film Festival. And Congratulations. Fest in Sydney. Wow. How do you yeah. go from I mean, short movies is one thing, but then going to a full-length feature <laughs> film, it, 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 fundraising and all that sort of thing, is all that involved? Does that come under... A, you know, it, is it one of your hats? Uh, well, I kind of, you kind of have to wear so many hats, especially when it's a first film. You sort of put everything behind it. But I guess with the feature film, it takes a lot more years of your life than a short film. Yeah. <laughs> it's, so, I'm yeah. sorry, go on. No, I, it, and, go for it. Ruth, can you tell us, just in a nutshell, what your film, The Space Between, is about? Absolutely. Well, it's about The Space Between. It's um, basically a story of an intersection between love and loss. So it's sort of a moment in the main character's life that he encounters or sort of has one of the worst moments that really collides with one of the best moments in his life, so in a nutshell. Okay. Mm. Uh, now, I guess there are several men in the cast. Do men resent taking directions from a woman? Oh, interesting question. <laughs> um, no, I didn't find that at all. Right. I, the actors I cast were very sensitive, especially, so I think uh, they'd never worked with female directors, so it was, they yes. were sort of curious, I guess, to oh, do so. Oh, how wonderful. But no, I didn't encounter And, and you shot this where, in, in northern Italy mainly? Yes, in a region called Friuli Venezia Giulia, yes. um, which is little known, but it's sort of just an hour train ride from Venice. Oh, and how lovely. Beautiful. Do, does the countryside resemble Tuscany at all? It, it's greener than Tuscany. It's a oh, green version of Tuscany. How wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> Has this come out of, I think anyone who does a movie, there's an element of them in it. You sound very Australian to me, but that's a very Italian surname. Yes. Is that why this has taken that particular shape, an Australian-Italian movie? Yes, I guess my name itself is a giveaway, isn't it? I'm really half-half. My dad is, was born in Italy. I yeah. think I was at school with your dad. I think Such so. an unusual name. <laughs> you remember it? <laughs> well, yes, indeed. <laughs> Hang on, would, would that be right? Was, did your dad go to, where did you go? Xavier. Xavier, yes. yeah. Did your my dad, dad go? went to Xavier. Ah. Yeah. Is he still with you? Boy. Yes, still, he I'll is. give him my regards. I will, definitely. He we should catch, we should catch <laughs> up, yes. Absolutely. Now, there's a historical note to the film as well, isn't there, Ruth? Because this is, guys, would you believe the first co-production, if I'm not mistaken, the first co-production between Australia and Italy, even though it was possible to do since about the mid-1990s, this is the first time it's actually happened. Is that, is that true? Yes, crazy but true. Yeah. It, they signed a treaty in 1996 and it had never been used before we, we made it happen. So I guess we're kind of in the journey of making a film, we understood why. Maybe it's very challenging. <laughs> <laughs> Almost <laughs> impossible. Yeah, because um, you wanted this to be a co-production, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, we fought really hard for yeah, it to be come? a co-production. Yeah. Um, I guess because I am half-half and I guess I, I always really wanted to create this bridge between the two. I sort of grew up watching a lot of Italian cinema and it influenced me and I felt you know there's such a strong Italian community here as well that it's only natural to kind of bring their stories here and vice versa. Yeah. Hey here's a great question did you shoot the movie in two languages? We did we did that's half half as well. Oh how interesting so, yeah. so I guess in the Australian release you've got Italian subtitles in the Italian release you'd have Australian exactly. or English subtitles. Yes. yes and we were one oh, of the first clever. films in Italy to have English subtitles oh. because they dub everything so but I really wanted the Aussie accent in there. Yeah. Uh, Jim is it a surprise there hasn't previously been a marriage between Australia and Italy. I think that what Ruth has done here, apart from making, by the way, a beautiful film, this is a really sweet romantic film about how even a fleeting uh, encounter of love can have a profound mm. effect on your life. It's basically about a chef who's in Italy, who's kind of in a midlife malaise, who meets an Australian who's mm. there, who's in a similar kind of situation, and they basically fall in love. Is it based and on a true story? 
It is. It's inspired by the moment when I met my husband, Davide, oh. who also became the producer of the film. He's Italian-Australian. I, I was going to say, Davide, very yeah, Italian Davide, as well. Yeah, exactly. Oh. He was born in Italy. We imported oh. him here. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we met basically in this very sort of tragic moment of his life. And so it always kind of stayed with me and was something I really mm. wanted to explore in film. How interesting. Uh, but Jim, but, uh, you know, I was just going to make the point that what Ruth has done is she's highlighted one of... I guess one of the weaknesses that we've had with the Australian film industry, which in the mid 1990s, where was the ambition to do this kind of thing? So mm -hmm. the fact that she's actually chimed in with the first one 20 years after the the, the, the starting gun yes. went off kind of highlights that we've we've been we've been behind the eight ball a little bit. Very importantly, where can we see the movie and when? Now this I'm going to throw to Ruth because. You made the film a while ago, and it was at the film festival last year. Can you just tell us a little bit, Ruth, about the life that the film has had since last year and where people can see it now? Absolutely. So the film did really well at the Lavazzo Italian Film Festival last year. Um, it was one of the audience favourites of the film. Since then, we had an Italian release in May across 31 cities. A few weeks ago, we premiered in Toronto at a film festival in Canada, which was an amazing experience to have it outside of the two sort of home countries mm. and really great response. And it's coming to Australian cinemas this Thursday, the 20th of mm. July. So it will be in Melbourne. It will be exclusive to Cinema Nova. Um, but there's a possibility that it might also be screening regionally, so at the Star Cinema mm. in Bendigo. Oh, uh, uh, well, but Natalie, as you know, the neighbor, very discerning lady. She is, she's yes. great, she's very inspirational. She chooses her product very carefully. Where would yes. we be without the Nova? It's extreme, mm. it's a, that is an understatement. Mm. It's an extraordinary art house complex, and Natalie Miller's doing a great job. Uh, and her and her, her team, of course, do a great job programming films that otherwise might not get a screen. Now, Ruth, I'd like you to get you to address this issue. There's, there's, come, I'm sorry. Be before uh, we do, Jim, yes. we're well overdue for a break. Oh. So if we can, we can come back. Can some, to, some more questions sorry. for Ruth. And I also want to... Can I just sneak in it's Impala Cinemas or for the, in the rest of Australia? Oh, Impala. It's great. Yes, Interstate, yes, that is. Yes, yes. And Perfect. it's yeah. being we'll presented by Alfa Romeo, which is up at Park. Oh, right. Cool. <laughs> we'll, we'll come back. We'll talk some more to you. Because I also... I, I love to delve behind it. I want to find out at what point in Ruth career did she decide ah yeah movies is the thing for me so we'll do all that after this 21 to 11 on 3AW on a Tuesday night Jim Shembury in for Paul and we have special guest Ruth Borgobello in the studio with us director and writer and everything uh, to do with her movie The Space Between and Ruth, I do have a, a, an edgy question for you. It is an issue that has been around for a while. A lot of local filmmakers do raise this voluntarily. And guys, we've actually brought it up on the show as well. And that's the issue about Australian films that almost need to get recognition or acclaim overseas before it happens here. We have so many examples of this happening. And you yourself have just mentioned that the film got a major release in Italy, it's been released in Toronto, and now is getting a fairly short release in Australia. How do you feel about what appears to be a lopsided situation? You would expect it to be the other way around, surely? Well, it, we did have this release planned before Italy, so it was always sort of meant to be that way. Okay. Um, but I know what you're saying. Mm. I think there's definitely, it was interesting, there's been a lot more interest in the film in Australia since we made it than when we were trying to make it to try to get support here. Whereas we had a lot more interest in Italy, sort of from the word go, mm -hmm. in in that regard. Ah, so you had you, you actually noted a difference in attitude between yeah. Australia and Italy in the process. There was uh, a lot yeah. of drive and motivation from Italy yes. to do the first co-production. I'm, I'm going to have to have lunch with Ben Zacola and talk him into running it in every palace theatre in Victoria. I love you. Okay, <laughs> take him to La Porchetta. Okay. Uh, now, Ruth, uh, take us back through your child, because you're, you're quite young. You're a lot younger than, well, Jim and myself, and, and substantially younger than Phil. Thanks. Um, when, uh, when in your life did movies become the thing you wanted to do? At some stage, did you want to be a vet or you know, <laughs> something? And one day you just thought, no, I want to give, want to give movies a try. I think it was always movies. Initially, I wanted to be an actress when I was little, or a writer. I thought I had a good name for a writer. Yeah. <laughs> I saw oh, myself yes. as an author, rude. Yes. Um, but then when I was in my teenage years, I sort of discovered incredible cinema. 
some films that really stand out are when I first saw A Clockwork Orange and films like The Graduate that mm. you just kind of walk out of that cinema and it stays with you for weeks. You can't stop thinking about it. And I thought, wow, the power of cinema is something that I would really love to get my hands on and tell stories through cinema. And how did you go about it? Because I mean, you, you don't just wake up one morning and go, oh, I'm going to make a movie and then do it. it, it hard work? It's hard work and years. I mean, it's. I, I went to film school in 2002, so that's, what, 15 years ago now? Yep. <laughs> um, 13 years before I actually got to make The Space Between. So it does take a long time. I think when you first go to film school, you think you'll come out and have the world at your feet, but there's mm -hmm. a lot of competition. Uh, Ruth, anyone in the movie we would recognise? Uh, there's the beautiful actress Maeve Dermody, so oh, yes. she's an Australian actress. Yes. Um, she did a film called Porno a couple, uh, last year, so she was nominated for an actor. P A W N O. Exactly, yes, it just, sounds. Just, you know, <laughs> before Phil falls sideways. Yes, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Not to be confused by by anything by Irvin Welch or anything like that. Right. And also, <laughs> the, but the Italian lead in it. Tell us a bit Flavio about him. Parenti. Is he's so, very famous. He is very famous. So you might have seen him in films like Woody Allen's To Rome With Love and I Am Love, which was a really great mm. film uh, a few years ago. So he's one of Italy's biggest actors at the moment, uh, along with the, the uh, actor that plays his best friend, who's actually become hugely popular since we met uh -huh. him. How did that go for you then? You, you turn up on set, this is your first full-length you know, full length feature, so you'd be a touch nervous to begin with, I would imagine, and there you are directing someone who's been directed by Woody Allen. <laughs> I, I was mm. so much more excited than nervous, I think, because it took me so many years to get to that point. Yeah. Yes. Uh, to be honest, the most nervous I was was working with kittens <laughs> in the film <laughs> <laughs> because they were so unpredictable. But I got, I'd had the chance to really get to know Flavio a lot before we made the film, so we sort of had become friends and had a great sort of connection and dialogue. Um, so it didn't, it didn't feel intimidating. Um, but yeah, I try not to think too much about him acting and, and being directed by Woody Allen. Mm. <laughs> and what is your next project? So I, I have a couple of projects. One that I'm about to go and do research on now, which is another Italian-Australian film. Um, at the moment the title is Night Flowers and it's sort of exploring the current refugee crisis in the context of um, Italy, where things are pretty crazy at the moment. Um, and then I have another TV series project that I'm developing. Right. Yes. Oh. Top secret. Uh, <laughs> if, if, you, if you need someone for the, if you need someone to play a nonna, I'm married to a, a half Italian. Oh. And right. her her mum is your, your classic quintessential oh, uh, Camilla really? Cipolletta is her <laughs> nonna. And, 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 she, and she'd happily appear in any yeah, movie. She sounds and, like a great cook. And, too. and, <laughs> and she works cheap. Uh, Ruth, <laughs> any chance you might be nominated for a best foreign movie at the BAFTAs or the Academy Awards or? Or is that come and gone, Jim? That, that opportunity. Yeah, the, the FIs, how they how do they work um, for you? The, or the actor awards, the actor, as they are yes. as they are awkwardly now known. Yes, mm -hmm. we're just going through the process now. We had an award screening last week for the actor right. awards, so uh -huh. um, hopefully we get some nomination. It would be fantastic. There is a line in the film that gets a huge laugh, and I know I'm going to be giving it away, but you know what the line is, and it's 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 a a moment where the girl is upset and she's missed an appointment and the guy comes and encourages her to go to the appointment even though she's late and she says but you know it was three hours ago i was supposed to be there and ruth can you just share with us what he says in response <laughs> and, and and what is behind the line so he says who cares this is italy and kind of grabs her hand and takes her in to go and yeah it's that's that line is mm. everyone's favorite line in the film it got mm. a lot of laughs and what does that tell us about the italian mentality <laughs> <laughs> anything goes, you know. Like everything, everything, <laughs> everything is very. Uh, everything's manana, is it in Italy? Yeah, <laughs> yes. very laid back. Yeah, go with the I flow. Manana you know? means tomorrow. Well, <laughs> yes, but I mean, if, so everything's tomorrow. If she was <laughs> running three hours late, well, obviously time didn't matter Doesn't at all. Matter, Doesn't which matter. Which is a great thing about Italy. It was a great joy to work in that kind of environment. Mm. Yeah. Well, it's good. I hope the film finds an audience. Again, um, we won't get into the whole thing about the Australian film industry at the moment. We had a great year a couple of years ago. Last year it kind of started sputtering out a little bit and we've had some great films this year but there just seems to be, it seems to be stop, start, stop, start. I mean there's a young filmmaker coming up in this industry. How do you feel about, you know, about the, the ground under your feet? Is it stable enough? Would you like things to be different? 
I'd love things to be so different. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, I don't think they will be because there's so much risk involved and I think distribution is really hard to get for in Australia in particular. There's a lot of competition and unfortunately Australian audiences don't support Australian films typically. Yeah, yeah but um, you'll probably make your money once it's on DVD. That's yeah, or yeah, or internet. So yeah, there's exactly. other ways, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I think, a question to Jim, I guess. Are we in a place now where we're going to get past the worst of piracy because we've now got good systems like Netflix and yeah. things in place. I think there's no question that uh, Ruth's film, for instance, is going to be available at some point soon, I imagine. It'll be available on uh, either Netflix or Stan or YouTube, Amazon, all the, the uh, you know, yeah, Microsoft, iTunes. all those other platforms, and it'll be available fairly promptly. The whole thing behind piracy, you've got to understand, is that People aren't at home thinking, okay, how can we deprive the studios of billions of dollars? No, That's they just true. want to see something now. Yes. And it's the immediacy of it. So really, it's about people's access to things when they actually want them. And again, in the case with, of, of Roots Movie, which is a beautiful sort of art house film, people who want the film will be able to find it and they'll be able to watch it legitimately in its proper resolution, not in some uh, degraded uh, form shot off a digicam or something. Yes, with the audience yeah, exactly. getting up in front of it. Yeah, yeah. No, but yeah. The, the, the piracy thing, unfortunately, is mainly driven just by people's desire to see something when everyone else in the world is seeing it. The whole thing about same day and date release is going to become more and more common where a film that's released in the United States, we're not going to have to wait two or three weeks for it to come here. It'll open the same day. And that's actually happening now with a lot of big films. In fact, in Australia, sometimes we see them first. Uh, one last question. Uh, I guess we should have asked it at the start, Ruth. Uh, why the title of the film, The Space Between? Yes. It's very intriguing. That's an important question too. The film is really a metaphor for me for the space between dreams and reality. Oh. And I guess that's the whole, for me, that's the interesting journey and it's been a really interesting journey even in making the film it's the kind right. of moments and relationships that happen within that space I think I'll have to go to the Nova and have a look at this hopefully you do well congratulations to you I, I wrote a movie script once a long time ago and I've never gone back to revisit it I'd, I'd never see the day where I would ever successfully get a movie off the ground I'm so, looking for scripts oh well you're, <laughs> they're you're hard well, to come by well, so. you're, you're mm. well, I'll, I'll send you a copy of mine and you can have a good mm. one Simon so, I told you they didn't need a third killer tomatoes movie <laughs> they made two <laughs> that was enough <laughs> <laughs> Ruth Borgabello, thank you so much for your time and all the best with the movie The Space Between. Thanks so much for having me.